Meet Jane, a PhD student who has done amazing work on the discovery of a novel respiratory drug. Jane is on the verge of finishing her graduate degree in the life sciences and wants to continue development of the drug and find a company. However, Jane is also tempted to continue her academic research as a postdoc. Many of Jane's colleagues and peers are also encouraging her to stay focused solely on the academic research, as they believe that being involved in entrepreneurship will limit Jane's academic freedom. Fortunately for Jane, a third career where scientists are able to have a foot in two worlds exists. By choosing to pursue academic entrepreneurship, Jane was able to retain her academic freedom while also being able to bring scientific discoveries to the market. To have a foot in both industry and the academic world, academic entrepreneurs like Jane must first possess a rare blend of skills. They must have attributes of traditional scientists, for example, inner drive, rigor, and analytical skills, while also having the markings of traditional entrepreneurs, for example, being able to recognize innovation, create value for the customer, and have willingness to take risks. Some may fear that the work of scientists can become biased and riddled with conflicts of interest if they were to also be involved with the commercialization of discoveries. However, a review paper by Rasmussen and Wright has also found that commercial spin-off activities from research is actually positively related to measures of research productivity and quality. It can be difficult to become a world-class researcher while commercializing a technology at the same time. The challenge is further heightened if the university environment that one is working is not supportive. The traditional university culture can act as a huge deterrent wherein young scientists feel unqualified to become entrepreneurs while PhD students and postdocs are encouraged to focus entirely on research. Nevertheless, changing the university culture has the potential to positively impact the entrepreneurial motivations and attitudes of students. Numerous initiatives are available to encourage entrepreneurship in Canada. This includes programs, fellowships, access to mentors, innovative hubs, and many other resources that can be found across various universities. An essential resource at the university is Technology Transfer Offices, TTOs, or Technology Licensing Offices, TLOs. Both TTOs and TLOs commercialize university research by assessing commercial potential of research and securing intellectual property protection, supporting faculty and the students in this technology transfer process, wherein ownership of technology is transferred from one entity to another, create and maintain industry partnerships. Industry partners may be interested in or could be recruited into helping bring specific technologies at the university to market, provide counseling and incubation of university spin-off companies. Jane, who is interested in commercializing her scientific discoveries, may benefit from working together with her university's TTOs or TLO. Here, McMaster Industry Liaison Office, MILO, functions as the TTO TLO at McMaster University. More often than not, academic entrepreneurship will require collaborations from different fields. University-based organizations can play an invaluable role in encouraging interdisciplinary collaborations between clinicians researchers, entrepreneurs, hospitals, and industry partners. For example, Michael DeGroote Health Innovation, Commercialization, and Entrepreneurship, MGD Health ICE, offers three spaces, the clinic at Mac, the clinic at Joe's, and the clinic at DeGroote. a multi-site space that brings together various disciplines with the common goal of academic entrepreneurship and health innovation. For instance, MyPax, a national nonprofit which works with partners in industry, academia, and government to support research-based innovation, recently initiated collaborative projects with the clinic at Joe's. With these resources, academic entrepreneurs are well-equipped to tackle real-world problems. For example, the COVID-19 Open Innovation Challenge was a funding program established by Roche Canada, whose aim was to identify and support innovative solutions to challenge and issues resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. Many rose to the occasion, including MBA candidates Rama Alatut and Karen Clark, members of the clinic at DeGroote under the supervision of Goran Kalik, an assistant professor at the DeGroote School of Business. Alatut and Clark worked together with investigators from the Research Institute of St. Joe's, Dr. Jeremy Hirota and Dr. Melitha Vukmarovic, 
and were awarded $100,000 from the Roche Pharmaceuticals for their work on nasal swab and diagnostic of COVID-19. Furthermore, additional funding has been awarded by the Ontario government to McMaster University researchers for five pandemic studies, meaning that academic entrepreneurs must rise to the challenge of combating a significant real-world problem. It is clear that the work of academic entrepreneurs can help society act fast and develop new technologies for emerging problems. Many analogous resources and organizations mentioned in this video should be available to aspiring academic entrepreneurs. By choosing the third path that is academic entrepreneurship, Jane can ensure that her research of respiratory diseases can have a positive impact on the world. Across Ontario, there are 17 Regional Innovation Centers, RICs, which are a great resource for students interested in accelerating their technology startup. RICs often provide programming, mentorship, workspaces, and access to startup funding. The RIC services and programs are yet another resource that Jane can potentially use. Located at the McMaster Innovation Park, Innovation Factory acts as Hamilton's RIC. Innovation Factory aims to build a culture of and community of innovation within Hamilton through hosting group workshops, providing one-on-one -on -one mentoring, and aiding with access to funding. Innovation Factory also hosts pitch competitions, such as the Synapse Life Science Competition, which pairs up life science innovators with business and entrepreneurship students with the goal of commercializing innovative concepts. For example, Synapse Winter 2020 winner was Bicep Inc., who received $35,000 in cash along with in-kind prizes. That will help Bicep Inc.'s wheelchair immobility and ambulation training device reach the market. Another great resource is Campus Linked Accelerators, CLAs, which is a program that provides funding to universities with the goal of creating, improving, and or sustaining a culture of entrepreneurship. This funding is typically used to provide co-working spaces, seed funding, mentorship, training programs and workshops, consultations, and much more. If Jane wanted to further explore entrepreneurship, visiting her university CLA should be helpful to found her company. The Forge is a CLA which acts as a business incubator for McMaster University and the Hamilton region. Alongside the services provided by CLAs mentioned previously, the Forge also hosts a startup school, which helps to teach the tools needed to build a company. The Forge is supported both by the McMaster Industry Liaison Office and Innovation Factory as well. Together, the McMaster Industry Liaison Office, Innovation Factory, the Forge, and MGD ICE create an entrepreneurial ecosystem in the Hamilton region, which can help aspiring academic entrepreneurs such as Jane thrive. If you are a university student with an innovative idea and are interested in becoming an academic entrepreneur, TTOs, TLOs, RICs, and CLAs are all resources which may be available near your university.